see you drinking at a fountain with tiny blue hands. No, your hands are not tiny. They are small. And the fountain is in France, where you wrote me that last letter, and I answered, and never heard from you again. You used to write insane poems about angels and gods, all in uppercase. And you knew famous artists, and most of them were your lovers. And I wrote back, it's all right, go ahead, enter their lives. I'm not jealous, because we've never met. We got close once, in New Orleans, one half block, but never met, never touched. So you went with famous, and wrote about the famous. And of course, what you found out is that the famous are worried about their fame. Not the beautiful young girl in bed with them who gives them that, who gives them that, and then awakens in the morning to write uppercase poems about angels and gods. We know God is dead, they've told us, but listening to you, I wasn't sure. Maybe it was the uppercase. You were one of the best female poets. And I told the publishers, editors, print her, print her. She's mad, but she's magic. There's no lie in her fire. I loved you like a man loves a woman. He never touches, only writes to keep little photographs of. I would have loved you more if I had sat in a small room, rolling a cigarette and listened to you piss in the bathroom. But that didn't happen. Your letters got sadder. Your lovers betrayed you. Kid, I wrote back. All lovers betray. It didn't help, you said. You had a crying bench, and it was by a bridge. And the bridge was over a river. And you sat on the crying bench every night and wept for the lovers who had hurt and forgotten you. I wrote back, but never heard again. A friend wrote me of your suicide three or four months after it happened. And if I had met you, I would probably have been unfair to you or you to me. It was like this.